AI made another leap forward. Again. So let's talk about it. But ironically, this time, I think I'm starting to see a clearer picture of what AI is really doing for us. At least when it comes to videos. About a month or two ago, there was another progression to the AI video generation market when Luma AI released their model called Dream Machine, which is a text video model that allows anyone to generate videos just by typing in some text. Even if you have a picture that you want animated, you can feed that into Dream Machine and voila. Now, text to video AI is not new, not by a long shot. We've already seen something like this. Like when Sora AI went viral earlier this year with their really impressive model. And even before that, services like Runway and Pika Labs were already out and available to the general public. It's just now, Luma's in the game. But the progress I'm talking about isn't necessarily the release of Luma's Dream Machine. The model itself is all right. It's pretty good at times. I mean, I don't really have a hard opinion on it. I still think out of all of what's available, Sora still reigns supreme. And AI in general, in my mind, flops between being awesome and being soulless bull****. The milestone here is not only Luma Labs joining in, but Runway also updating their video model with improved results. It's actually looking pretty good over there. They practically released it at the same time. So as time goes on, and these companies are working hard in releasing new and improved stuff, we'll probably see these models achieve Sora level quality soon. And it might be sooner than we all think. That brings me to the main point of this video. We obviously can't stop AI and its rapid escalation. And because of that, I've always had this 50-50 type of stance on AI. Using it like QuibbleCop to pump out as much soulless content as possible for the internet just for money? That's ass. <laughs> there are ways to use them as useful tools to support and enhance your authentic video and photo projects. So along that train of thought, I want to talk shop. I want to give you five ways you can creatively use video AI for your future art and video projects. And I want to emphasize when I say creatively, because I want to talk beyond the scope of what we commonly are seeing AI being used for right now, which are basically internet memes and AI voice cloning for jokes. Some of them are actually really funny as Why do I have no riz? Because you bald as But I've mastered every form, including backbending. What? But with how realistic AI is getting, I've been seeing a bunch of creative ways people have been using it online and really, just wanted an excuse to test them out myself. With the first being using AI to create your very own stock footage. This idea actually came from MKBHD when he was talking about Sora a bit ago. I doubt he was the first one to think about this idea, but nonetheless, video AI is pushing realism so fast, so much so that it's starting to blur the line between what's fake and what's reality. Again, just look at these Sora clips. So using it to generate realistic clips and using that as stock footage for your film and video projects could totally work. And it's only because of how fast AI models have been progressing. But the use case I'm referring to is kind of sort of nuanced because admittedly, I'm against using AI to generate an entire short film for you. As of right now, when you do that, you end up with something lifeless and boring, which kind of deprives a lot of the joy that comes from filmmaking and even watching film. Just search up on YouTube AI short film and click on any of them, you'll see what I'm talking about. But let's say you were making a documentary or something, filmed everything and you get to editing. You're editing, you're editing, everything's looking good, right? And then you run into one little snag where you're just missing that one shot. Maybe you forgot to film it or something or you were being rushed out of one of the locations or something like that. Maybe you just didn't even think about getting that shot. But if you just had that one shot, your edit would just be perfect. Well, now instead of investing more time, energy, money, filming some pickup shots and flying to the location just to get that pickup shot, you can just generate that shot using Sora or Luma or Runway or whatever else is out there. Problem solved. Assuming you're looking for something rather simple like a landscaping shot to establish your scene or like a building, an exterior of a building or something like that. Using AI to create simple shots to use sparingly in your edits is actually, it's an actual practical use case for video AI models. You can put them in your edits to establish your scene or introduce your scene or maybe just as a nice visual or at least that's kind of the idea. 
And with how high quality these AI video models are getting now, there should be no problem with mixing in the occasional AI building shot to help you with your story. From what I saw from Sora and even with some Dream Machine clips, it does a pretty good job at getting these establishing type shots. As long as the shot isn't too complex, getting a good result shouldn't be too hard. And it's actually totally possible now. The simpler the better here. If you're looking to have some action in your clips or a character showing any type of realistic emotion, that's where AI actually falls apart. But talk is cheap. So let me see if this is actually a practical use case or not. And to try this out, I broke out one of my previous projects, which I was hired to edit a medical documentary. I remember running into the exact same scenario I was talking about before, where the crew who filmed it actually didn't film any establishing shots of any of the medical buildings at all, and I thought that would have been a good idea to do. But with AI models like Dream Machine, if I just generated a hospital-like building exterior like this one, and just threw it in the edit, that should work, right? Looks like it did. It even generated it in less than five minutes. Or even better, what if I found a picture of the exact office building of the company and had Luma animate that? There, Video AI just solved my problem, all from the comfort of my own computer chair. And I didn't even have to fly out there and get the shot myself. And the results are actually impressively scary. Number two, bring in your photography to life. So by now, you might be noticing a little bit of a trend I'm talking about. If you peep the game and locked in, you'll notice that right now, I'm giving out examples where AI is enhancing your already existing art, not creating it from scratch for you. Even in the last example I was talking about, yes, it's creating the last shot from scratch, sure, but we're using it to enhance a completely original and authentic short film. I'm putting this in a lens where AI is being used as tools, not copyright infringing machines, but honestly, I guess that's not really mutually exclusive. There are a lot of examples online that are already doing this. It's just more commonly used for meme purposes, but the idea is kind of the same where you can use these video AI models to bring your pictures to life. When Luma initially dropped Dream Machine, Twitter and TikTok were crazy with the memes. Man. I was seeing a plethora of animated album covers, people animating their mid-journey renders, which is kind of an AI to AI workflow. There was even a trend where people took old classic memes and had Luma animate that. There was this whole time traveler trend you had to make there, honestly. The sky's the limit with this idea because when I say people went wild, I mean it. Like this example here where someone took a previous viral art post and somebody threw that to Luma to animate it and voila we got this. Another example is animating album covers which a lot of people love to do. Someone animated the famous Beatles album cover, someone animated uh, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. It's pretty fun and easy to do and Dream Machine even has this cool keyframe feature where if you feed it two pictures it'll morph one into the other into one cohesive clip which can be great for making cool visuals as you can see with this cool eye clip or even if you wanted to make a time lapse you can feed it one daytime clip or one nighttime clip and then you get something like this eiffel tower clip where it just makes a time lapse again it would be super cool to put something like this into one of your personal film projects i'm just saying to take this idea even farther you can even animate product shots now this is more for the pro photographers out there. I got this idea from this Twitter user who animated this product shot using Luma's Dream Machine, and admittedly, she got mediocre results here, but I still like this idea of feeding your own personal product shots and turning them into video clips to also make video commercial out of them or something like that. Talk about killing two birds with one stone. And not to mention, Video AI already does a good job at creating product visuals from scratch, so I can not take some actual original material and make something out of that. So that's exactly what I wanted to try right now. Let's pretend I have my own soda brand like, like Fizzy Fusion. Nah, I'm just kidding, that doesn't exist. But let's use this Waterloo Sparkling Water, for example. Then let's say I, I'm hired to do a, some product shots for it. So then I go and do that. Now I have some nice product photos of this soda brand. Now all I have to do is take those pictures, upload them into Dream Machine, write a prompt to whatever actions I really want to see, and see what it comes up with. Which, it came up with this right here. 
everything I heard while working with children. That's pretty cool. Like some of the shots aren't perfect, obviously, but the fact that these started off as stills and ended up as videos that I turned into a video commercial is actually kind of a cool concept. I'm kind of impressed. Number three, generating VFX assets. Now this is the one concept that has me excited because I actually never thought about doing this myself, but it wasn't until I saw this clip from this Twitter user that convinced me that this might actually be a genius idea. What he did here was use video AI to generate VFX assets. Specifically, was used runway to generate some concrete architectural shots. Then he added some greenery animation on top of that using a 3D program like Cinema 4D. This is unique to me for two reasons. One, he used AI to generate a VFX plate for him to composite onto. And then two, this is actually a great idea for VFX practice. Or again, if you ever needed to do a cool VFX shot for your projects or like your reel or something, this can literally be the answer. Damn. It's such a unique way to problem solve using AI to generate the VFX play itself because usually we're stuck with whatever footage the crew shot for us. As a VFX artist, sometimes you can find yourself in a predicament where maybe the original footage isn't even all that great, but with AI, you can just generate specifically what you want. That's a crazy concept to me because, again, when you're given the option to generate any clip you wish, the sky is the limit. You can just go into Luma, ask it to generate whatever, and then composite whatever on top of that. Along the same train of thought, not only can you use AI to generate a background for your VFX shots, but you can even generate specific assets themselves. If you're familiar with using VFX stock footage, you'll know that they're usually footage of real elements like an explosion or a realistic muzzle flash or something, but filmed on either a black, blue, or green backdrop so you can key out the background and cop it onto your personal footage. Two of my favorite, favorite stock footage asset sites I use personally are Video Copilot's Action Essentials and Action VFX. Those guys are great. They both have a lot of high quality VFX assets and you'll notice most, if not all of them, have black backdrops on them and that makes it really easy to comp on top of anything because you can just set it to any additive blend mode and then voila you have your explosion. But the thing with using these websites is that they cost money and they aren't necessarily cheap so why not just use video AI to generate your own VFX assets? That way you can have your very own explosion clip to use but without having to pay $250. There's a Twitter user that did this exact thing with he made this UFO shot, which, yes, according to him, is 100% AI. What intrigued me here was that this is not the shot that came out Dream Machine or whatever video AI model he used. He generated a missile shot to comp into a different UFO shot to get this final result, which honestly looks pretty good for an AI render. So seeing this UFO shot and then this architecture shot, to try this idea. So I found this shot from a trip a couple years ago and I just wanted to make it explode because I needed to try this and I needed to pump. Theoretically, if I went into Dream Machine, used it to generate maybe like a missile, an explosion, and some debris, or better yet, generate an explosion in mid journey, feed that into runway, click last frame, and it should animate a higher quality explosion than just using the normal text to video. Also, a green background worked better here too. So there's that. And then comp that into this shot, I should be able to get something like this. Kinda looks great if you ask me, but now I wanna see what it's like if I generated the VFX plate instead. So I went into Dream Machine to generate this clip. And once I got a good looking result, I went into Cinema 4D, tracked it, animated some grass onto it. And voila, I have some grass VFX growing in these random ass building shots that I could use in a short film about grass taking over society or something. 
Idea number four, generating concepts and ideas. Now this idea is a pretty big one in my opinion because not only does it align with my personal morals of not having AI make your entire art for you, but I feel like this concept goes past the realm of just video and photo. In general, AI is actually a totally valid tool for generating concepts and ideas. This doesn't just apply to AI video models either. Like, for example, people were heavily using ChatGPT when it initially released for like ideas for anything, like baby names or business ideas or things of that nature. You can literally ask it for ideas for anything and it can give you a pretty comprehensive list to your exact question. I even used it in my last video when I was making a fake soda brand and I just needed a name for it and it gave me like 30. In the realm of AI images though, when models like Mid Journey first came out where you could just generate photorealistic images, people were using it to visually conceptualize their ideas. I saw people generate mood boards for their projects, making full cool, like comic books, you know, making visuals for their you know, novel ideas, and even generating like custom company logos for their online business. Brian Connolly from Film Riot talked about Mid Journey way back before AI went viral and gave out his personal workflow for his story and mood board, which was basically just generating a bunch of Mid Journey pictures to portray the mood, the tone, and the story of his story app. He would generate images of visual shots, colors, pretty much just to get the general vibe of his idea so he could just accurately portray his film idea to others, like investors and people who were interested. Along with that same note, along that same note, if you ever had a film idea, generating a bunch of specific clips to make like a proof of concept AI short film is honestly not that bad of an idea as long as it's to visually portray your idea to show before actually going to film it that that type of workflow makes sense to me we're not talking about using ai and making an ai film and you know you know that being the final product it's sort of along the same lines of filmmakers shooting a short film shopping that around to investors to then fund their longer future Doing it like that not only proves that you can pull off that sort of story and production value, but also that the story itself kind of holds some merit. If you deliberately sabotage my band, band, I will f*** you like, like pig. Now if we bring it back to the realm of AI film and that type of proof of concepting, there admittedly is no skill barrier there, but you can still prove that your story holds merit and can possibly still get people on board. That sounds like a perfect use case in my opinion. And last but not least, memes. And everybody's already on this bandwagon, but using video AI, or really just like AI in general, is actually perfect for making memes. Goose, laughs. Who knew something so powerful as artificial intelligence would be dwindled down into just making it an image? Honestly though, probably its biggest contribution. Like I said earlier, both my Twitter and TikTok feed were flooded with remixes and AI extensions of classic memes. On TikTok, there was even this time travelers trend going on where people were using Dream Machine to create alternate endings to these meme videos. Like this 20 year old Charlie bit my finger video. Or remember that nine plus 10 meme? What's nine plus 10? 21? You stupid. Here's an alternate ending to that, which is kind of unsettling. You stupid. No, not. What's 9 plus 10? One more example. This being one of my favorites. Have you ever wondered what happened after that couple passed by this lady? Turns out, he was just a shitty boyfriend. The internet truly went crazy with Luma's image to video feature. I mean, people were even animating emojis, which not gonna lie, it's kind of a unique idea. Although I don't really think it's too practical. I guess it just goes to show you that when something like this becomes widely available, the ideas just start flowing and we just start seeing these unique creations and these unique ideas. Even from people who probably wouldn't even consider themselves artists. Now just imagine what would happen when something with a fidelity like Sora officially releases. That quality will be insane. What's funny to me, at first when Sora was released, the fear mongering was at an all time high. The industry's dying and jobs are being taken away. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not really here to invalidate that viewpoint. It's probably actually happening as I speak, sadly enough. I only wanna point out that when Dream Machine came out, we saw animated memes. <laughs> and that's it. Dream Machine's biggest contribution is just internet jokes. 
that's what people have been using it for. In a way, it's, it is kind of sad to see something with this good of potential being reduced down to just being a meme machine, which is not a bad name for it, that, or at least that seems to be its most popular use case. What I'm hoping for is that we'll see it used more as a tool for artistic expression as well. But at the same time, not everything really has to be that serious, right? If it's good for a couple of quick memes and a couple of internet laughs, then okay, I'll, I'll laugh. But yeah, that's all I really have, and I'm sure there are a million and two other ways video AI can be used. These were just some of the use cases I found the most interesting first. Luma's release of Dream Machine serves as another milestone, not only in the realm of AI, but in video and filmmaking as well. And I wanted to use this video as a reminder that we are entering some turbulent times. Election season's coming up, AI is becoming more and more accessible, and the internet is going crazy with everything already. So I just want to take this opportunity to not only tell you guys, to just remind everybody that to stay vigilant, also want to encourage a bit of a paradigm shift when it comes to these AI video services. And don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. The fear around it makes 110% of sense. As a digital artist and filmmaker myself, half of me actually thinks it's amazing to see people finally bring some of their artistic vision to life. But then the other half of me shares that same public fear a lot of the community already has. Hollywood is changing. Internet videos are changing too, and I don't know what exactly is gonna happen. I'm just choosing to try to at least use these AI tools as just that. So instead of being too afraid of the inevitable, just a little bit afraid. If you have any fun ways you like to use AI videos, let me know because I would just love to hear them. That's it for me right now. Next time you see me, I'll probably be in a museum of some sort. But for now, let's just start embracing AI before it takes over the world or something.